Okay, so in the previous video, we set up a 2D maze and your character just navigates it using the WASD buttons and they just have to find the way out. So I figured in this one, we'd introduce a new challenge and that is they have to find a key. The key unlocks the door that's blocking the way out. And the original ask for this project was to have a simple maze that you could give to a child. So the idea is that by adding a key and a door, it would be the next level of difficulty. And so what you would do is you would add a uh, start menu with an options menu. And in the options menu, it'd be like easy, medium, and hard. Easy, when you choose easy, there's no key and there's no door. You choose medium, there's a key and a door. And then hard, we could think of some other complication. Maybe there's a timer. So let's get started. So as you can see, there's a key and there is a door. Now this is really just a white square that we're gonna change the color to and shape it to block the path. Now for the key in the door to move in sync with the maze, because as we said, it's actually the maze that's moving and not the person, we're gonna to have to have the key in the door. We're gonna make objects and then those objects will be attached to the maze just like the exit collider boxes over here. So let's do that. So let's take the key, put it in, and that's just about right size. So we'll take that, we'll move it over, and we'll say put it up here. Now that collide that needs a collider. So as we mentioned, colliders is what, as the name suggests, detects collisions. So add physics 2D box collider. You could do, um, there's a couple types or several types actually, but there's like um, a polygon collider, which would be more fit, form fitting. We're not really worried about that though. We just want them to be able to grab the key and go. We're not worried about precise collision detection. So the second thing is the door. As you can see, it's just a square. So let's put it say right here. I mean, it could be at the very exit, really arbitrary how you want it to be. Now, as you can see, it's not quite the right size. So you can scale it to X, and then we'll shrink the Y because it really doesn't have to be that deep. And I suppose we could make this a little bit bigger. This also needs a collider. It's a box collider. Now, in this case, this can't be a trigger. This has to actually block their path. So we'll leave that as not a trigger. But for this one, we do want this to be a trigger just so they can pick it up. OK, so now that the objects are in the scene, we now need to make them children or else they won't move with the maze. So drag and drop, drag and drop. Let's give it a run. So there's no colliders here, so we're just going to walk through the walls to make sure the placement is right. Okay, the placement is right. The placement is right, and we want to make sure that we can't walk through it. Good, it stops. Okay, so far, so good. Now what we need is a script that will detect a collision between the player and the key and then set a variable to a new value to indicate that we've picked up the key and then a script to detect a collision with the player in the door that checks to make sure that variable has been set to the value that indicates you've picked up the key. So right click, create C sharp and we'll just call this items because maybe it'd be attached to something other than just the key. So we'll click on the key. We'll put items on it, we'll open this up, and outside of start, outside of update, void, on, trigger, enter, 2D, collider, 2D, other. Didn't mean to jump up there. 
And this script, as we said, is attached to the key, so it's going to look for uh, a collision with the player Shin. So if other dot name equals equals Shin, then we want something to happen. Well, for now, let's just see if the key gets destroyed to make sure this is working. Destroy game object because destroy game object destroys the object that the script is attached to the script is attached to the key so if there's a collision with an object named shin then uh, the object uh, the the key object is destroyed so let's just run this to make sure that works and it's it particularly when you deal with collisions I strongly recommend that you test every part of it before you, you proceed. Test every little step because you don't want to put in like six or seven commands and trying to figure out where it's failing. You want to know really quickly what part is not failing. We know for a fact that we picked up the key because the key was destroyed. So this is the command that destroys the key. It only happens if a collision occurs with an object named Shin. So let's go ahead and put a variable in here. So we're going to define the variable in the move maze because we're kind of using that as a game master object. So public, and it has to be static so it's accessible to the other scripts and the other items. Public static string. And you don't have to do a string, you could do an int. Um, there's a few other options too. I'm just going to use a string. And we'll call the string have key and we'll set it to end for now. I like as I've mentioned before, variables to be self-documenting. When you see that variable, you should know what that variable does. So now we can come back here to items, and just as we destroy the game object, we also want that new variable, which is defined in move maze, and it's have key, will be set to Y for yes. So we're halfway there. We've already we've now picked up the key. We make the key disappear. Now the second part is for the door, for the door to disappear. So we're going to have a very similar uh, event happen. So again, since it's a simple one, a simple game, I'm just going to create another script. Sometimes you might want to try to consolidate scripts. No real need to in this case. So create, and we'll call this um, barrier because it might not just be a door, it might be some other kind of barrier if you're planning on scaling this out. And we we'll take the barrier and we apply it to the door object. And we open that up. Okay, so outside of start, outside of update, gonna do something very similar. So void on collision enter to d collision to d other now in this one we did on trigger because it was a trigger uh, because the object itself is a trigger and we check to see if the name of the object was the player object before any decision or any functionality is performed. Well, here we want to do something a little bit different. We're not checking the name of the object. We want to check to see if that variable has been changed. So if, and that variable was in move maze, dot have key equals equals y and it only equals y after this has occurred so if move maze dot have key equals y then just like the other one or should I say just like in items destroy game object this time the game object that's being destroyed is the door object because this destroys the object the script is attached to the script is attached to door and if you want we can also have have key whoops sorry move maze 
dot have key, we can have that set back to no. Just in case this goes from one maze to another, you want that set back to no. Now that should do it. So first, let's make sure that we can't just walk through without the key. Okay, we're still stopped. And now we'll go back. And again, these collisions aren't occurring because I never put the colliders there. I didn't feel didn't feel like it because it really wasn't necessary. Okay, we successfully picked up the key. You could also put in a debug log statement so you could see the variable be printed out there, but I was fairly confident this time because I tested it in between recordings. And now here's the test. There we go. It walked through the door, and now you can leave. So that's it, really. Um, in a brief splice there, I basically just went to an external folder and dragged and dropped in this cursor image. So what we're going to do is, as the final step, when you pick up the key, it just disappears. We destroy it. So what I decided is we're going to put a single inventory slot up here and have the key go into that slot. So to do that, though, we're going to take the cursor object, well, image, and make it, uh, put it into the scene. We'll move it towards the top center. And we're actually going to shrink this. This is really probably a little bit too big. So let's do like 0.8 by 0.8. See how that looks. We'll take the key. But we're not going to use this key. We're going to take the key image and create a second key object. This key object is going to be attached to the camera. Because what's going to happen is when you pick up this key, we're going to have the key appear in here. But whereas this key moves with the maze, the key in here needs to move with the camera. Okay. So we're going to take that key and push it off to the side. Is there another way that you could do it with... Um, changing parents and things like that. Yeah, you could, but again, this is a very simple game and this is pretty straightforward. So what's gonna happen is this key will still be destroyed. This key, which will be off the screen because it's attached to the camera, will get moved up here. So first, let's just take a look to see how that looks there. So let's take the cursor, put it onto the main camera. Now it should move along with the uh, um, uh, with the player and not the maze. Right, so it stays stationary because it's your inventory slot. Next, we want this key to be moved there. So how do we do that? Well, the key is a child to the camera, but it really doesn't, um, it, it, other than it moving and rotating with the camera, the camera can't uh, directly try to make any changes to it. So it's more of an inheritance that if you move the, the main camera, the key moves. If you rotate the camera, the key rotates. So it's more of an inheritance rather than a direct control. So what we want to do is we want this to get moved into here when this key gets destroyed. So what we're going to do is since there's already a script here on this key destroying this, we're going to use that same script to reach out to this key and move it. And again, yeah, there probably is a way to just have this key be moved and set a new parent, but this is easy enough anyways. So items is what's attached to this key, which is the one you pick up. So right now we destroy the key. We also want to do something else. We want to move the other key. So to do that, it needs the uh, one key needs to be aware of the other. So public transform, since it's an object, public transform, and we'll call this INVKEY, inventory key. Save that. So watch what happens when we click on the maze key. You now have this new inventory key object. So you're going to take this key, drag and drop it there. And then since we already have the section carved out for where the picking up of the key occurs, we're just going to say, let's click to see what the position of the uh, cursor is. There we go. We're going to say uh, 
INV KUI. So we're going to get component, the transform component, the position. We're going to use the position of the inventory slot at the top. Equals new vector three, zero, comma, 4.17F, since it is a uh, decimal, you have to use the letter F. And, and uh, let's see. That's, actually, that says Z10. Yeah, 10 is fine. In the, um, in the 2D environment, the Z only matters as long as it's in front of the camera. So whether it be a little bit or a lot in front of the camera, as long as it's in front of the camera, that's all that matters. All right, so we're almost done. So when the trigger occurs with this key, then this other key will be moved to the inventory slot, and that's what that does. Last thing, we have to make sure that the key and the cursor are on our top of everything else. So for the cursor, order and layer will put at nine, the key will put at 10, or vice versa, since one is really framing the other. Okay. That should do it. There we go. Just like that, the key appeared there. And you could do other things too, like have the color of the, um, you could have the color of the inventory change. So like it's red when you need something, it becomes green when you pick it up, that kind of thing. And if you wanted to, you could really move the key out of the inventory slot too. But so I think I've uh, accomplished everything that I wanted to. So now there's a door, there's a key, uh, there's now an inventory slot for when you pick up the key. And uh, what we'll do in a later video is we'll create the options menu that uh, will determine whether or not the key and the door show up. So if you choose easy, there's no key, there's no door. If you choose medium, there is a key and a door. And if there's hard, like I said, maybe there's something else that will do like a timer. So that should do it for this one.